Hey guys, Kimberly here with the Artistic Frog in the studio tonight, getting ready to paint up this new design. And uh, this is just going to be a practice shirt. So I haven't decided yet what color. What colors to do it in? Do not know. Goodness, I haven't done this in a while. This has been about three weeks. Getting a very crisp design here. Kind of wobbly up there. Glad this is going to be one of my ride shirts. Um, something that I wanted to mention, and I've mentioned it in a couple of the groups. Um, I mentioned it to Bunny. Um, anyway, this uh, wax that is in my skillet is um, Goodness, guys, sorry having to pay attention to what I'm doing here. It has been a while. Uh, the wax that I've been using is um, the filtered beeswax. Um, I really like the unfiltered beeswax. It seems to be um, a thicker consistency than the than the filtered. Um, the unfiltered has all kinds of natural things in it. And um, some people may not notice the difference, but I have been. This filtered beeswax seems to want to spread on the fabric, um, regardless of the temperature that you use. And I have had people ask me what what the temperature, the actual temperature is of the wax. And I just always assumed that because I set the thermostat on my skillet at 200, that it was going to be 200 degrees, um, give or take a little bit. I, I was going to check it before I started the video, and it's getting kind of late. Um, I get up and go to church in the morning, so I just wanted to get this done. Since I haven't done anything in so long. But I did want to mention that uh, using the... Using the filtered beeswax is just ever so slightly different 
than using the unfiltered. I think I grabbed a different size. Ah, it works so much better for me tonight. I think this is a number two. Well, I could get right up there and get a point on that. I like that. Um, and chanting tool needs a Gonna fill that in with this number three. That um, my number two is the point of it's kind of rough. I need to take the sandpaper to it. And I did have somebody ask me. I'm gonna show you this real quick. Um, without dripping this on myself, I do take and, and straighten the ends of my chanting tools, um, is simply because I don't like to work on a flat surface. I like to bring it to me and hold it suspended. I am used to doing that with, um... When I paint on silk, it's uh, suspended, and this is just um, the easiest way that that I found to do it, and I've tried it many different ways. This is the way your janting tool comes. And it's a nice, pretty copper color. It's beautiful. This is a number two. Uh, the size is listed right up there. And use that for reference right down there. Um, I want you to look at this chanting tool. How nasty that is. I hey, look how dark. Let me show you. Um, grab a Kleenex here. Using this filtered beeswax, it causes, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was out of camera. It causes um, your chanting tool to just turn really, really nasty looking. And, um, I mean, not that it hurts anything, but... Again, I just want wanted to note that there are definite differences using the um, the filtered beeswax, like you can get at um, at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. They both sell the same kind of wax. Um, we're getting the organic 100% beeswax from a from a farm. Uh, hopefully I have been able to um, source some of that. I went to Tammy Sue's Critters and that is here in North Little Rock, Arkansas. And um, it went as a, a, a girl's day out with some friends of mine. And... Um, we had a really good time making soap and they use goat's milk and they even put beeswax in some of their some of their goodies that they make and uh, sorry if I'm holding the janting tool in front of you guys um, Anyway, she gave me a phone number of um, a beekeeper that's very local 
Hey, hey, bee, honey, I think. I'll have to check on that to make sure. Um, but I'm having a really hard time finding somebody that wants to sell the unfeeling the unfiltered raw beeswax which is kind of crazy to me it seems like they would want to do less work you know and and sell that if they could instead of going through all of the processing that they have to go through um but, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about there because I do not know, personally know any beekeepers. So, um, until I find out exactly what their, what their process is and how they handle all that. Um, we don't know what we don't know. Now, something I've noticed, too, and some of you boutique artists out there, I don't know if you've noticed it or not. When you use your janting tool to go ahead and paint this in like I am now, and all... All of the wax is hot. You get one, one solid shape instead of getting a line. And then when you come back in and you, you're painting it with a paintbrush, then you, you, you always see that little line. And sometimes that's cool. Sometimes that's that that gives it added dimension and you may want that and other times maybe not so much maybe you want just this shape um it's just a just something that i noticed um the last time that i did uh some um angel wings on a shirt and this kind of looks like a butterfly too, but um, the last time I did this, I just, uh, just the design of the shirt, it was just so much easier for me to go ahead and fill it in with the janting tool. Now, mind you, you're using a whole lot more wax, in my opinion. I, I don't know that to be an absolute... 100% hard fact um, and maybe it's just the difference in a paintbrush and and the janting tool I, I don't know really hot and turn it down just a smidge okay Let's see if I can get this back up here uh, yeah let's go ahead and
might have a line there. Really thin line there, kind of kind of cooled a little bit. Uh, and um, let's see. I don't know if that's gonna be in the shot. Let's move that down some. There is um, a little bit of the unfiltered beeswax in the skillet because I didn't completely run out. before I put some of that the filtered beeswax inside the skillet that fly is going to get on my nerves just all of a sudden in the last couple of days there's very annoying I don't know if y'all saw that on camera or not My son just moved back from Tulsa, Oklahoma after being gone for about two years. And the door has been open a whole lot more today than usual. <sighs> doesn't want to fill in very well. Anyway, very, very happy and very, feel very blessed to have him back home. He's my baby. He's the young one. Last one to leave. Coming back home. Guys, um, this is a really good way to uh, practice using your janting tool also. 
If you notice when I come back I have this janting tool I get wax in it then I come in the middle of where I want to lay that out so that if I get a big blob it doesn't matter and you can use that time to uh, try to play with it so that you don't get a blob. And it just takes practice. You just have to practice it. And fill in an area with the janting tool like this gives you gives you practice. Gonna get those other feathers up there, but let's go ahead and finish this out. Uh oh, didn't quite make it up there to it before I got that drip. All right, make it work. And in case you're uh, watching for the first time, um, all of this drawing on here was um, put on there with, uh, with a washable marker. That tip um, comes from Batik Walla. Uh, it's a fantastic tip. All of this just ends up washing away so it gives you um, it, it's not a hard and fast thing that you have to follow um, if when you're doing your janting work if you go out of line a little bit that's that's perfectly fine because all of this whether it's uh, underneath the wax or outside the wax, all of it's going to disappear in the um, in the dye baths and um, when you boil out boil out the wax, um, it just it all just goes away. So. All kinds of different fantastic tips that you can pick up from different people and there's um, there's so many people out there doing this now um, and so there's uh, different people are coming up with different ways and it's just it's fascinating to see what everybody is is doing and what they're coming up with um, just uh, some really fascinating artists out there learning how to batik. And 
I would encourage you to um, to seek out different sources. Not everybody has the same way of uh, doing this. I know a lot of people. Um, have uh, written and um, they maybe have a different way of doing this and and they they might question the way that I do it and it's just whatever works for you Whatever is easiest for you. I just, uh, when I learned to batik, I actually learned um, to batik on silk first. And it was not this type of batik where you use full immersion dye baths. You use, um, I was using silk paint and silk dye, both, uh, depending on what I was doing. And um, some scarves, some paintings. But it was... You know, the, the concept of using a resist, I just, I found it fascinating. The first time I saw it was on the Carol Duvall show. And um, I remember one of the ladies was a lady from Memphis, Tennessee. And she was doing gecko leaves. And they turned out really, really pretty. Um, and then I remember a guy from, um, from Arizona. And he did uh, his form of um, painting on silk was different than the lady from Memphis but both equally fascinating. Blow on that to help it cool off. Um, do y'all remember the Carol Duvall show? I miss that show. Um, that's been a long time ago, but that's, that's where um, I learned about what they call batik. And uh, even though that, neither one of those were a true form of batik. This is more of what I would consider a true batik. Using wax um, as you resist doing full immersion dye baths. I know there are some people that um, are using the Jacquard Donaflo paint and um, guys if you've not ever used that don't be afraid to use it it is not the, the fabric paint from the 80's um, it is um, very liquid and um, and acts just like a dye, but it's so much easier to use. And you have to iron fix it. I usually let mine sit for um, 24 hours and then I iron it. Or, I think they say that you can 
let it sit for a week, something like that. Not real sure. Don't quote me on that. I um. But my point was, as some people are are using the Donna Flow on these shirts to do their um, what they call batik, batik clothing. And uh, not all batik is the same. People you people throw that word around and. Uh, sometimes they're not referring to the ancient form of batik that is that is like this. But okay, I have one more over there. And let's do this. For those of you that um, that are doing batik, I want to challenge you to um, do some videos. Show people what you're doing. Sorry, guys, I gotta cool that off. My arm, that's gonna be on my arm here in a minute. I should have done the other side. The other side first. I generally try to work, since I'm right handed, I try to work in the upper right hand corner first, and I come down from the shirt a little bit, and then I know that, uh, you know, all of these will be wrinkled up, so I, I try to come back up here. And get this part and then you know work my way down I guess if you're working on a flat surface that that doesn't that doesn't really matter um, I'm gonna have to come back to that um, tell you I'm thinking Hmm. 
I don't know, guys. I, I may, even though I went ahead and drew this in, I, I may not want all of this white. Wait a minute. It is going to have to be outlined. Okay. It'll have to be outlined. Sure would love that red. Wouldn't that be pretty? I don't know. Don't know how I would do that. And Get it to come out like I would want it. Get that up out of the way. Well, you know, I may put it, I may put this in a pink. And, um, which is going to make the heart go away for now. Let's see how I did this other side. That comes down a little bit more. Sorry guys, got a lot of, a lot of beeswax wanting to pull there. It was fixing a, oh it did, it just dripped on my, on my hand. A little blurp there. Big scheme of things, so it'll all be all right. When you hold this at an angle, like I'm doing, and I'm hoping that y'all are able to see it. See, it's not, I usually don't hold it flat. It's more at a at an angle and not, not the camera angle is <laughs> kind of messing with me, but, um, off there. Uh, anyway, the gravity helps um, f make your wax go on really smooth when it's when it's at more of an angle. Now you can get too much of an angle and it will um, really start to want to drip on you. That may show a little bit of line there because it kind of cooled, but that'll be all right. Um, I'm also curious because I do sign all of my shirts. Um, for those of you who are batiking, are you signing your your artwork? I hope you are. Um, 
these are individual one of a kinds. Even if you do a series of a, of a particular design, no two are going to be the same. This is um, this is never to be replicated uh, exactly identically, um, especially when you do the multiple dye baths because all of the modeling on it is is different. It's very different. Okay, so you guys like that design? That pretty? I forgot to um, do my little signature up there at the top. I usually try to put that in marker first, but um, I think I am going to get this in the dye bath and then come back and and do the heart and the love and then put it in another dye bath after that. I may do some extra things. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, but I am really pleased with this design so far. Hope y'all like that. And um, we're going to call it quits for the night so I can get to bed and go to church in the morning. And I would certainly hope that uh, you guys are going to do that too. So, um, God bless, and I appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate my new subscribers. Thank you guys very much. Um, yeah, so we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.